2009 brought Franklin and Marshall its second NCAA championship in women's lacrosse in the last three years. It also took a wealth of talent from the Franklin and Marshall roster. GoDiplomats.com caught up with head coach Lauren Paul to get a final reflection on 2009 and her outlook for 2010. Well, 2009 was absolutely a dream come true, not just for me, but for the entire uh, 2009 women's lacrosse team here. Um, we started off facing a little bit of adversity um, for them, uh, having a new coach and coming off a loss of the championship in 08. Um, you know, and for me, getting to know a new team and coming back and trying to figure out what's the best way to coach a team who's a national uh, championship caliber team um, and make sure that we do everything the way it needs to be done. Um, in order to get back to where we wanted to be. Paul has four senior captains who have been to three NCAA title games. She talked about each one of their leadership styles. Sure, each one of them is different, and I think when you're building uh, kind of your group of captains and leaders, you want a you know, pretty versatile bunch. So um, Blake as a captain is someone who is definitely showing what needs to be done on the field, as well as a really caring individual, and she is very sensitive to other people and really... Um, she's easy to get along with. She's definitely someone that the girls are going to be able to come to with their problems, but also she she finds it really easy to relate to other people. So anytime you know they're struggling with something, she's really there to pick them up. And defensively, I think the great thing about having the three of them back there is that you know def defense wins championships, and we have three of the strongest players on our team back in that defensive end. And not only are they just helping that that initial defensive unit that they're back there with, but they're constantly seeing the rest of the field and helping the entire team. In my opinion, Lily Sands is the best player that's ever come through FNM's program. She's not, you know, the goal scorer, she's obviously, you know, a lot of times goalies don't get the recognition that they deserve, but she has just gotten better and better each year, and just watching her for this first week of practice, she gets better and better every day. Um, I think a lot of people in the past have seen has seen Blake as the person that sets up everybody else. Um, this year, um, you know, she's kind of finding her niche with each person and figuring out who's moving where, how she's going to work with each person. But what she's also doing is, um, you know, cutting through the eight more. You're going to see her taking more one v ones. You're going to see her role become a little bit more versatile, and you're going to see our attack change a lot. Our attack just doesn't work without Meredith. She is such an impact player, and everything she does, every direction she moves, every time she has the ball, all seven defenders are looking at her. So every time she does anything, we've taken the attention away from every other attacker out there. So even if she's not the one scoring those goals, even if she's not the one assisting on those goals, she's created the play to get somebody open on the attack. And that is an incredible role for um, you know, junior to have, and especially because she's been doing that for the last two years, and I don't even think she realizes how important that was. I think as a class, they've kind of made a pact to, you know, do whatever it takes to make sure that our team, you know, stay, the tradition of our team stays where it needs to be. Um, Kat Serpy mainly played on our defensive end last year, and, you know, every once in a while got her chance in the midfield, and that really was a role she played because we had such a strong midfield last year. Um, this year, she'll see her more on the attacking end, um, definitely running the field a little bit more. Um, Earhart will play, you know, hopefully a similar role. She'll still be in the, in the midfield, but she's going to be more of a leader this year and more of a presence on attack as well. We're going to see a lot from Katie Delaney, um, Aaron Dunn, Megan Cohen, um, Becca Foley, Casey Downey, I mean Jordan Quinn, that, that entire class, Mar Margaret Shanley, um, Mary McNutt, they all are going to see a tremendous amount of time this year. So we had, uh, you know, two or three, maybe even four players last year who got a, you know, a incredible amount of time on our attacking end. Um, Sarah Vineski, Laura Rupersberger, and then two of the sophomores I mentioned, Aaron Dunn and um, Katie Delaney. I think they all um, are coming back with a lot of experience and um, they're in great shape, they're ready to play, they're ready to take over those roles, and they've been doing an incredible job leading this team throughout preseason. You know, right off the bat, you know, Maggie May Shields, she's a freshman, um, she is a midfielder this year, and she's going to be someone that you're going to see right off the bat starting making an impact for our team. Lauren Swarovski is a six foot tall attacker, she, you know, very versatile on attack, and she's someone who might see a little bit of time this year. Um, Elizabeth Hudson's a midfielder. She's, in a, she's just a workhorse for us. She's someone who could get in the mix. And then Jennifer Noon is a defender, and she's someone who, um, you know, she's, she actually is a January freshman, so she's only been through four days of college practice, and she's already impressing us.
I think if there's one player that can step up to even fill part of that role, it's going to be Cat Serpy. Um, but to be honest, I think what's, what you're going to see happen is get left away from that one person who's always scoring, the one person who's saving the game, the one person who's doing this, and more towards every single person taking part of those characteristics and embedding them within themselves. So you're going to see a bit of a more well-rounded effort on the field. And you can see that effort on the field when the Diplomats open the season at home Saturday, March 6th against Washington and Lee. Follow along all season on GoDiplomats.com.